Hi there. I've been doing a lot of um, testing and, and kind of messing around with the new Teams NDI feature. And um, I think I've got a solution now to a common scenario that I keep running into with Microsoft Teams Live Events. As you know, uh, Microsoft Teams Live Events are fantastic for being able to have more control over um, what is on screen at what time. The producer has a lot more power than they have in a typical Teams meeting. But one of the challenges that I keep running into is having more than one presenter. And I keep getting uh, these groups that I go in to advise them about Teams Live events and they keep wanting to um, have a panel or have two hosts of a show or something like that. And they want both people to be on screen at the same time. Well now, with uh, NDI in Microsoft Teams, I'm able to um, accommodate that along with some other uh, cool tips and tricks and uh, more branding, more uh, visual appeal that we can add by using an external encoder now. So I wanted to kind of run through this scenario and build this in OBS to show you what is possible with uh, NDI in Microsoft Teams. So to start out, here's kind of our scenario. We've got two presenters, Dr. Mario and Peach. They do a weekly show internally hosted for the employees to watch at Contoso and they want to be able to both be on screen at the same time. So I'm being tagged as their producer. We've got the three of us as this production team and the two presenters and myself, the producer, we're gonna call each other on Teams. So we're gonna have just a normal Teams meeting together. Peach is going to be a presenter with her microphone and her webcam on. So she's gonna be just one of the hosts. And then Dr. Mario, the other host, is gonna be using his webcam his microphone, and he's going to share a PowerPoint so we have some kind of content to show up on the screen. Previously, with Microsoft Teams Live Events, we could only have one of these speakers next to the content. And then me as the producer, I would have to switch out which presenter is on screen at which time. Now with NDI, I'm going to bring all of them together, the three pieces of content, Peach's webcam, Mario's webcam, and the PowerPoint that he's sharing. Uh, they're at their home, you know, remotely, not in the same area. And I'm gonna bring those together in OBS and uh, lay it out on a screen that um, doesn't look like a typical Microsoft Teams meeting. So, you know, the, the audience won't know that we're just in a meeting together. We're gonna take that, we're gonna send that over RTMP to Microsoft Stream because it's gonna be viewed in Yammer. Before, I could have certainly done a uh, Teams encoded live event. We could have hosted it in Teams, sent out a link, or we could have hosted it in Teams, done the encoding in Teams, but even displayed it in Yammer with the new Yammer feature where you can choose external encoder or Teams encoding. What we're gonna do now is external encoding with OBS. We're gonna use RTMP with great audio, great video quality, and um, it's gonna look a little bit cooler this time. So. Here's what we're gonna do. Over here, Dr. Mario's laptop. He has his and Peach's weekly show. It's already on the calendar, ready to go. So he's gonna go ahead and join that meeting. It's just a regular Teams meeting. He's gonna join that. There he is with his you know, gray wall sitting behind him. He's got his microphone. I'm gonna go ahead and mute it so we don't get any uh, feedback. And he's going to join the meeting. So. There's Mario by himself in the meeting. Over at Peach's house, she has it on her calendar, the weekly show. She's going to join the meeting as well. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this. And once it loads up, she'll join that. And right over here on my table, there's Peach sitting there ready to, uh, to join the meeting with her webcam. Gonna mute audio again so there's no feedback. And we're gonna join that. So as soon as she joins, we've got Peach and Mario together right here. Um, they're just chatting pre-show stuff. And Mario can go ahead and he can share his screen. So he's gonna go over here, he's gonna share their PowerPoint slide deck, what's coming in Microsoft Teams. Sounds like a pretty good topic. Move that out of the way. And now Peach on her screen, what she sees is the two of them talking to each other and the screen that's being shared. 
Now me, as a producer, I've got my Microsoft Teams client over here off screen. I'm going to also join this meeting. And because I'm just the faceless producer, I'm not gonna be on screen. I'll be muted and I'm gonna go ahead and turn my camera off. I don't need to be sharing my camera with these, uh, with these folks. And once that connects here in a second, show you what this looks like. So we'll go ahead and move Peach off the screen. And me as the producer, there's my view. I've got my two presenters right there and I've got the content that's on screen. Now with a Teams live event, I would only be able to show one of these people at a time side by side, or I could, I could even use OBS, I could capture this window I could trim off the uh, the top of it if I wanted to um, and send that over RTMP so they see literally this Teams call that's going on. I could certainly do that. It would be nice and easy for all the presenters that are involved. But I want to go a little bit above and beyond because now I have the power of NDI. I can split these three elements apart and rearrange them on the screen however I want. So let's do that. Let's go over here to OBS. I've got just a blank show with the screen plus the hosts, and I have no sources at all. First, um, I've created a little backdrop. So rather than having just a, back, a black background, I've got this nice um, you know, weekly show with the Contoso logo, cool picture I found from Unsplash. And the next step is to add those three elements on screen and rearrange them. In the back here, I wanna put the screen really big in the middle so everybody can see the content. It's kind of the main focus of this show. So I'm gonna hit plus and we're gonna add an NDI source. If you don't have NDI in OBS Studio, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you install the OBS NDI plugin. You can find that from the OBS website. So we're gonna start with the screen and hit okay. And in this dropdown, You'll see that because I have NDI running on my local installed teams, um, I see all of the people who are involved. I see the active speaker that would swap in and out depending on who's speaking at the time. I've got the Dell laptop behind me. That's actually Mario right there. I've got Megan who's in my virtual machine. That's the little peach icon that's right here. And then the shared screen, whoever's sharing the screen will be in this little variable. So if somebody takes over the screen sharing in the meeting, it will automatically swap out that content. So we're grabbing the screen. We're gonna select shared screen right here. And that should just come up right here. Looks great. I think I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger um, and put it in the center, make it look nice. So that's gonna kind of be our backdrop right there. And then I wanna put the hosts in the corners right here side to side. So we're gonna go ahead and transform. We're gonna center that horizontally. There we go. So now we know it's all lined up, that's great. Now let's go ahead and add uh, Peach in. So we're gonna do Peach as an NDI source. We're gonna hit okay. And then Peach is really logged into Megan's computer. So we're gonna do Megan Bound and hit okay. And there's Peach. Looking great, looking fabulous. We're gonna put her in the corner. Um, yeah, we'll just leave it there for now. And then we're gonna add Mario. So NDI source, Dr. Mario. And we're going to grab him. He's logged into my laptop behind me. So that's this device. It would say their actual name in a real scenario. And there's Mario right there. They're not quite the same size. We'll fix that, we'll resize it here in a second. So this doesn't look great. We're gonna make it look cooler, but the most important thing to do when you're doing NDI in OBS is to lock the sizing of the window, the aspect ratio, the size of the, of the source. Um, as your internet fluctuates and as the call fluctuates up and down, um, it dynamically will change to maintain the, um, the latency, the quality of the call. So you'll see the NDI source can be variable. It can um, shrink down, it can get larger, it will change as your internet um, fluctuates. Right now I'm on Google Fiber. I just installed a, uh, a unified network in my house. So I haven't been able to get it to shift up and down, but I promise that it will. So you want to do these steps. As soon as you add an NDI source in OBS, 
always right click on that source, go to transform and hit edit transform. Then under bounding box, you're gonna to wanna to change that from no bounds to scale to inner bounds. The, the third option down, scale to inner bounds and hit close. And we're gonna do the same thing for peach, edit transform, change no bounds to scale to inner bounds and even for the screen. So every NDI source, you're gonna to wanna to go to transform, edit, no bounds, change that to inner bounds. See how that kind of changed a little bit? So now I can resize that screen, make it nice and big so it's prominent. Um, this will prevent that resizing and that kind of like pulsing that, that NDI can do. Again, I'm gonna center that horizontally and now I'm going to lock the screen in place so I don't accidentally move it. I click that little padlock. And then now that I've changed this transform for these two, I can go ahead and resize Peach to kind of be the same size as Mario. So I'm going to hold down Shift and I'm going to kind of make her a little bit smaller. They're about the same size now. I go ahead and drop her into the corner right there. So now the last step that we can do um, to make this thing really look awesome is it would be really cool if I could cut these people out of their background and have them on top of their content, like in the lower corner. Um, so I can see this great background that, that I designed um, behind them. And the way that we can do that, traditionally you'd send them a green screen. Those are really hard to find right now. So we're gonna use the awesome intelligence in Microsoft Teams to replace their background with a light green or a bright green background so that then I can hide that green background in OBS. So we're gonna go ahead and do that in, um, in Dr. Mario's laptop. So I would send him a green background and he's already got it preloaded. So what we're gonna do is he'll go into the meeting. He'll go up to the top and hit apply background effects. And he's got this great bright green background that I sent him previously. What I did is I just grabbed a slide in PowerPoint. I put the brightest green color I could find and I saved that as a PNG and I just called that green screen. So we're gonna hit apply. He's got this nice background. He's all cut out now. We're gonna get him off screen. Megan will do the same thing. She doesn't have it loaded yet. So what we're gonna do is she's gonna go to apply background effects. So again, we're on Megan's computer right now. She's gonna hit apply background effects right here. And she's gonna hit add new right here in the top corner. My laptop's at like 94% CPU right now. So um, she hit add new and then there's that green screen BG file that I sent her. She's gonna hit open. And now if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of this background settings area, there we go. There's her green screen. She's gonna select that and hit apply. And now that will make her background all green as well. So there's Peach is all green. That looks great. Let's go ahead and hide that. And we'll hide this one. Now on my screen in the Teams meeting, I just see two green backgrounds with people in it and I see the PowerPoint. In OBS, I now have these horrible green backgrounds that are super obnoxious looking. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of those uh, by using something in OBS called a chroma key. So we're gonna right click on Dr. Mario and under filters right here, we're going to add a new effect filter called chroma key. As soon as I hit enter right here, that green will vanish from behind Dr. Mario. Same thing with Peach, we're gonna right click on her, add filter, hit plus, and then under chroma key, as soon as I hit OK, boom, her green screen is gone now. And now I've got my two hosts. I can move Dr. Mario over so he's kind of just over the corner, move Peach over a little bit, kind of make them so they're the same height and all that cool stuff. And there we go. Now we've got the two presenters, just their head and shoulders on top of the content that they're talking about with a nice corporate branded background with the logo, the name of the event, all that cool stuff. The only thing left to do is to make sure that the audio is okay. Another quirk of NDI is that you'll find that um, 
Oh my gosh. You'll find that all of these audio mixer uh, sources right here are the combined audio for the team's meeting. So what that means is as somebody starts talking, even if one person is talking, all of those audio feeds will jump at the same rate. If you leave all of them unmuted, what you'll find is that you'll end up with this audio doubling. It's not quite an echo because it's so fast that, um, that it doesn't like reverberate off of itself. Instead, it will sound like this weird stereo effect where there's more than one audio source. It's very easy to tell that this is happening. So to combat that, we need to just realize that Teams NDI, like Skype NDI, has the entire meeting audio coming in on every single channel. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna mute everybody except for one of the sources. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute the screen by clicking the little uh, speaker icon, and I'm gonna mute Peach, but we're gonna leave Dr. Mario unmuted. Now I will only have one source of audio from the Teams meeting coming into OBS. After that, this is just as simple as going into the settings pasting in the RTMP URL that Yammer will give me, which uh, will allow it to send to Microsoft Stream. Then we'll start the event, we'll hit start streaming, and then we'll actually start the event in Yammer so that everybody can watch their show. So I hope that that kind of explains the cool stuff that um, NDI allows us now with uh, within Microsoft Teams. We don't anymore have to have a Skype consumer account get some executive to um, go sign up for a personal Microsoft account. They can go ahead and use Microsoft Teams in just a normal meeting. So um, there's no pressure on the presenters. All the pressure is on you, the producer, to practice this um, and do all the layout on the screen. And you can see, as I explained it, this took maybe, what, 10, 15 minutes. So if you're methodical and you go around and, and you build your scene beforehand, you can get up and running real fast as kind of a pre-show, do your sound check, make sure everything looks and sounds okay, and then you can go live with confidence that it's gonna look really awesome. So I hope this helps out. If you have any questions along the way, um, or if you think of something cool that you can do with NDI, let me know in the comments below, um, and I will be happy to try out some other things with NDI and um, learn this cool new tech together. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope you have a great time.